So I just bought the new RTX 3050. Well, why did I buy it? Well, honestly, not too sure. I bought it for this video and because it's the cheapest new RTX graphics card that you can buy right now. Now, this isn't going to be a full benchmarking video. The reason for this video is because I wanna throw it inside this Dell Optiplex here. Now, I've already put an RTX graphics card inside this Optiplex. It was an RTX 3060, but I had to buy a power adapter because it had an eight pin PCIe power plug. But this RTX 3050 six gigabyte doesn't require any external PCIe power, so it can just slot right into this Optiplex here. I already got the RTX 3050 inside here. I realized I should probably go over the specs of that little graphics card and talk about the specs of this computer here. After I do all that, then we will benchmark it. So this RTX 3050 has an MSRP of $180. Some models will be slightly above or even under that, but the one I picked up was this MSI Gaming X model. I paid $193.04. That was after tax and it's about 7% where I live. This card is rocking six gigabytes of GDDR6. If you didn't already, there is an RTX 3050 with eight gigabytes of VRAM and this six gigabyte version is basically that just less powerful. But one good thing about this model, at least the one I bought, like I said, it can just slot right into the Dell Optiplex. And the Optiplex that I'm testing it in is this Dell Optiplex 7040. They can be had on eBay for around $140. The specs of mine are an i7-6700, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, a one terabyte hard drive, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. All the parts are linked down below if you're interested. This video is sponsored by Super CDK. If you've built a gaming PC before, you've probably seen that watermark that's telling you to activate Windows. Or if you flip computers for profit, then you need to activate those builds as well. Instead of overpaying for a retail key, visit SuperCDK down below. They have Windows 10 keys for as low as $17 and Windows 11 keys for as low as $22 when you apply the discount code SPLA. Whatever Windows version you end up going with, the discount code will save you at least $5. Once you get the key, activating it is super easy. You just copy and paste it into your window activation settings, click activate, and bam, you got rid of that watermark. Thank you Super CDK, and be sure to check out their links in the description. I tested this Dell Optiplex in 1080p and also in 1440p to see what it's capable of. I started with Cyberpunk, I ran the in-game benchmark with the ray tracing low preset at 1080p. I first wanted to see what it was capable of, so I turned off DLSS. We averaged a huge 45 FPS. Honestly, I think it can do way better. I tested it at medium ray tracing and left on DLSS. Well, I thought wrong. This RTX 3050 actually sucks, but it also could be the i7-6700. I thought I would give it one more chance. I tested with ray tracing low and turned on DLSS and set it to balanced. Holy crap. I was expecting to finally get above a 60 FPS averaged. We averaged 53 FPS. So close. All right, what the hell? Let's try 1440p. Please don't blow up. Well, 1440p was a disaster, but at least I'm still here. When I made the switch to 1440p, we averaged 33 FPS and a 1% low of 27. Honestly, not terrible. I mean, it's quite smooth with 1% lows not being too far apart. Okay, so this card sucks with ray tracing apparently, but what about if you just ran Cyberpunk at all high settings with no resolution scaling and no ray tracing? Well, we finally got above 60 FPS, is what I would be saying if this card was better. Medium settings would probably push you above 60 FPS, but I wanted to test out another game. Okay, now for games that might actually be able to get 60 FPS at high settings, let's try Apex Legends. Wow, this computer doesn't completely suck after all. I'm sorry we made you crap your pants with Cyberpunk. In Apex Legends at 1080p high settings, we averaged way above the 60 FPS I wanted. And it even held its own at 1440p with high settings. It played super smooth and the game looked great. In Call of Duty Warzone Resurgence, I tested at 1080p with all high settings on the details and textures, but then in those shadow and lighting settings, I had those all turned off. With these settings, we averaged 71 FPS, and keeping the settings the same, except in 1440p this time, it was under 60 FPS, hovering around 52. So after dying, I decided to drop the settings to the balance preset, and we were still under 60 FPS. Then I died again, and I dropped the settings again to the basics preset, and we were still under 60 FPS. Well, at least it performed decent in 1080p. 
The last and final game, good old Fortnite. I didn't waste my time testing in anything other than 1080p performance mode. I got a couple kills and we averaged 173 FPS with a 1% low of 20. The 1% lows were kind of bad and I did play like four different games before actually getting these results to try to get the stutters to go away, but they were still bad. Now switching to 1440p, we scored an average FPS of 154, which I'm quite surprised with. And then we got a 1% low of 43, which I'm also quite surprised with. Maybe it being in 1440p, took a little stress off of the CPU and put it more on the GPU. Anyways, this computer performs pretty good. Well, in certain games that is. As you've seen in Cyberpunk, it was struggling to get above 60 FPS. But every game we played was actually pretty smooth, even if it didn't get the highest FPS. The 1% lows were all in close range to the average FPS. I'm not very happy with the price of performance that this computer provided, but I'm also not left disappointed. If you just want to play easier to run titles like the esports that I tested, then this machine will be perfect for you. If you want to try to build this for yourself, I will have all the parts linked down below and if you also want to see me build a more balanced gaming PC in this Dell Optiplex then click this video right here and I'll see you over there.